Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, I want to continue to solve past paper from AJU Mathematics 2022 second session course 2 question number 2 from second section. So basically, this is the fourth question from this whole past paper. If you want to watch the solution from the other problem on this paper, you can check link on the description box below and you can also check my edu playlist if you want to watch the solution from the other past paper before i start don't forget to hit the like button share this video to your friend and don't forget to subscribe my youtube channel if you like this video okay this question is about complex number we have alpha and beta, so we have two complex number here, alpha and beta. Satisfying the modulus of alpha is equals to square root of 10. And then 4 times 1 plus 3i times alpha minus 7 plus i times beta equals to 0. Let O, A and B be the points on the complex plane representing O I think O here is the origin, and then A, uh, I mean alpha and beta respectively. So we have three points on the complex plane. One is the origin, and then the other two is alpha and beta, which are represented by A and B. We see that modulus beta is equal to blah blah blah. So the first question they ask us to find the modulus of beta. If you see from this expression, of course I can find beta in terms of alpha. First of all, I will move this expression to the other side. So I will have 7 plus i beta. 7 plus i beta is equal to 4 times 1 plus 3i times alpha. 4, 1 plus 3i times alpha. If I want to find beta, I can divide 7 plus i to the other side. So my beta is equal to 4, 1 plus 3i over 7 plus i times alpha. I, I will simplify this expression first by multiplying both numerator and denominator with the conjugate of the denominator. Since the denominator is 7 plus i, I will multiply both the numerator and denominator with 7 minus i over 7 minus i. And then if you simplify this expression, you will get 1 times 7, which is 7, so I have 4, 7, negative i, plus 21i, negative i, plus 21i, we have plus 20i, and then negative 3i squared. Don't forget, in complex number, i squared is equals to negative 1. So negative 3 times i squared here is positive 3. So plus 3 over, do the same thing for the denominator since I have a plus b times a minus b. Then my answer for the denominator is 49 minus i squared. Once again, i square is equal to negative 1. So for the denominator, we have 49 plus 1. Plus 1 times alpha. Oops, this is 1, yeah? And then you can simplify the numerator. I have 7 plus 3. 7 plus 3 is equal to 10. And then I can times by 4. So... 10 times 4, you have 40, plus 20i times 4, 20 times 4 is 80i, over 50 times alpha. And then, 
you can cancel out the zero on each expression then you will get beta is equal to 4 over 5 plus 8 over 5i times alpha this is the expression for beta once you got beta you can find the modulus of beta don't forget the properties of modulus if you have or if you want to find the modulus of a b modulus of a b is equals to modulus of a times modulus of b so if i want to find the modulus of beta that means modulus of beta is equals to modulus of 4 over 5 plus 8 over 5i times modulus of alpha so i will obtain modulus of beta is equals to modulus of this to find the modulus of a complex number we can use a formula square root 4 over 5 squared plus 8 over 5 squared times the modulus of alpha we already know that the modulus of alpha is equals to square root of 10 so by simplifying this expression i think we can find the modulus of beta if you see this i have 16 plus 64 over 25 I have 80 over 25 don't forget to put the square root sign so I have square root of 80 over 25 times square root of alpha which is uh, I mean modulus of alpha which is square root of 10 so I will obtain square root of 80 over 25 times square root of 10 you can simplify this expression square root of 25 is 5 square root of 10 times 10 is 10 so I got 10 over 5 square root of 80 8 I mean and then I can cancel out 5 and 10 here becomes 2 and then the square root of 8 is 2 square root of 2 so my final answer for the modulus of beta is 2 times 2 square root of 2 which is 4 square root of 2 this is the modulus of beta so n and o here is 4 and 2 this is the modulus of beta once we got the modulus of beta the next question is when we denote the argument of beta over alpha by theta we have sine theta equals to blah 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 they want us to find the argument of beta over alpha if you see from this expression you can see that beta over alpha is equals to 4 over 5 plus 8 over 5i so i know that beta over alpha is equals to 4 over 5 plus 8 over 5i from this expression yeah you just divide the alpha to the other side since i already know that beta over alpha is equals to 4 over 5 plus 8 over 5i i can directly find the mod uh, sorry the argument of beta over alpha don't forget the formula of argument argument of beta over alpha basically argument of a complex number is tan inverse imaginary part over real part so tan inverse 8 over 5 divided by 4 over 5 so the argument is tan inverse 2 8 over 5 divided by 4 over 5 you can cancel out 5 here then you will get 8 over 4 which is 2 since the argument is theta so theta is equals to tan inverse of 2 if theta equals to tan inverse of 2 that means tan theta is equals to 2 tan theta is equals to 2 
Once I know tan data, of course I can find sine data. You can imagine a right angle triangle here. Imagine that this angle is theta, and then theta, I mean tan theta, is equals to 2. As you know, tan is opposite over adjacent. So the opposite side is 2, and the adjacent is 1. From here, you can find the hypotenuse. Of course, you can use simple Pythagoras theorem. The hypotenuse is square root of 5. Once you got the hypotenuse, you can find sine theta by looking at this right angle triangle. From that right angle triangle, sine theta is equal to sine is opposite over hypotenuse. 2 over square root of 5. By rationalizing the denominator, I can times or multiply both numerator and denominator by 5. Then my sine theta is equal to 2 square root of 5 over 5. This is my answer for sine theta. So P is equal to 2, Q is equal to 5, and R is equal to 5. Let's move to the question number 3. We have that the area of triangle OAB is blah blah blah. Now we want to find the area of triangle OAB. If you remember, O is the origin, and then A is alpha, and B is beta. O is the origin, and then A is alpha, and B is beta. If I give you a simple illustration here, if I have a complex plane, complex plane usually called as an argon diagram, the vertical axis is an imaginary part, and then the horizontal axis is the real part or real axis, I can make an illustration like this. Modulus alpha is equal to square root of 10, so I can assume that alpha is here. This is the point A. The modulus, modulus means the length of alpha from the origin. So the length of this line is equal to square root of 10. And then the modulus of beta is equal to 4 square root of 2. I do not know the position or the exact position of beta. So I can illustrate something like this. This is just my assumption. Yeah? Once again, I do not know the exact coordinate of beta. So I can assume that beta is somewhere here. I just assume beta is somewhere here. Beta is point B. Then the length of this line is 4 times square root of 2. And then where is theta? Theta is the modulus of beta over alpha. You need to remember the properties of modulus. Module, sorry, I mean argument, yeah? I mean argument, not modulus. Um, I need to know in my illustration where is our theta. Theta is the argument of beta over alpha. Theta is equal to argument beta over alpha. Properties of argument says that if you have two complex number that we divided, then the argument is equals to argument beta minus argument of alpha. This is one of the properties of argument. So if you have two complex numbers and you divide them, the argument is equal to the first argument minus the second argument. So if I complete this illustration, this is 4 square root of 2. This is 4 square root of 2. And then this is square root of 10 
This second line is square root of 10. This is origin. Argument beta is this one. So argument is the angle measured from the real axis to the complex number. This is argument of beta. And this is argument of alpha. That means argument beta minus argument alpha, which is theta, is this one. So this is theta. Now, from this illustration, I think it is easy for you guys to find the area of triangle. You want to find the area of triangle OAB? You already know that OA is square root of 10 and OB is 4 square root of 2. We can use sine rule to find the area of triangle OAB. If you remember, if you want to find the area of triangle, we can use formula half times A times B sine C. So half times square root of 10 times 4 square root of 2 times sine theta. Of course, we already find sine theta, which is 2 square root of 5 over 5. By simplifying this expression, I think you can find the area of triangle. I can cancel out these two first. And then if you see, um, square root of 10 times square root of 2 times square root of 5 square root of 10 times 2 times 5 you have square root of 100 which is equals to 10 so if you simplify all the square root form you have 10 10 times 4 divide by 5 10 times 4 divided by 5, then my final answer is equals to 8. This is the area of triangle OAB. So my answer for question number 3 is 8. Let's proceed to question number 4. Let C be the point symmetric to A with respect to the line OB. Let C be the point symmetric to A with respect to the line OB. Then C is the point obtained by rotating A around the origin O by blah 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 theta. I will focus on this one first. Once again, I need this illustration to give a better explanation for you. If you see from this illustration, I will erase 4 square root of 2 and square root of 10 here. As you can see here, if you have OA, this is OA. Imagine this is OA. Yeah? And then if you rotate OA, you rotate OA until here, then you will have C. Because C is the point symmetric to A with respect to the line OB. This is OB. So, from OA, from OA, from OA, I need to do a rotation about or by 2 theta to obtain point C. This is theta. Of course, this is also theta because C is the point symmetric to A. So this angle is also theta. So the answer for this letter T is we need to rotate OA around the origin by 2 theta. I will adjust the diagram a little bit. Yeah? Something like this. So the answer for letter T is 2 theta. This is point C. <coughs> Since we rotate OA by 2 theta around the origin, we get C. Don't forget the length of OA and OC are equal. 
So the modulus of A and C, A is alpha and C is gamma, is equal. Okay. Next question. Hence, when we denote the complex number representing C by gamma, we have that gamma is equals to blah blah blah. I want to find gamma is equals to blah 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 times alpha. So I need to express gamma in terms of alpha. Don't forget ya, A is alpha, C is gamma, and then B is beta. So I need to express gamma in terms of alpha. In complex number, if we rotate a complex number, that means we add the argument with some angles. So from alpha, I will add the argument by 2 theta and then I will obtain gamma. So in complex number, rotation means adding the argument. But don't forget, since the modulus of alpha and modulus of gamma must equal, once again because there is the point of symmetry, so the modulus must equal, the length must equal, that means we only do a rotation without scaling. So, we just add the argument, but we do not change the modulus. So, to find gamma, if I want to add the argument, if I want to add the argument, I think you need to remember the properties of argument. Another properties of argument, except this one. We have another properties of argument, which is argument of a times b is equals to argument a plus argument b. This is the other properties of argument. Argument a b is equals to is equals to argument a plus argument b. So argument gamma argument gamma is equals to argument of alpha plus 2 theta argument gamma the angle of this gamma is equals to the argument of alpha and then you add it by 2 theta argument alpha plus 2 theta so in this case I can say that the complex number of gamma is complex number of alpha times another complex number we do not know the other complex number here but gamma is equals to alpha times another complex number with argument to theta so i will write down gamma is equals to alpha times let's say z the argument of z is equals to 2 theta argument of z is equals to 2 theta but since we do not we do not change the length or the magnitude i can say that the magnitude of z must be equals to 1 because is because if the magnitude of z is not equals to 1 let's say yeah, magnitude of z is equals to 2 then magnitude of gamma which is equals to magnitude of alpha times magnitude of z if the magnitude of z is equals to 2 we can see that magnitude of gamma is not equals to the magnitude of alpha so since magnitude of alpha must equals to the magnitude of gamma i can say that magnitude of z must be equals to 1 from this information, I can express complex number z in exponential form. You need to know the basic of complex number yeah, before you can solve this question. There are three forms of complex number. The one is Cartesian form, the second one is the polar form, and then the third one is the exponential form. 
I will express z, the new complex number here, in the exponential form. In exponential form, z is equals to the modulus of z, which is 1, e to the power of argument times i. The argument of z is 2 theta. 2 theta times i. This is the exponential form of z. z is equals to 1. This is the modulus. e. This is the Euler number or the natural number. Argument is 2 theta times i. From here, I already know that z is equals to 1e 2 theta times i. So, gamma is equals to alpha alpha times z. z is this one. Times e to the power of 2 theta times i. I do not write down the modulus, yeah. The modulus is 1. I do not write down in here. So, gamma is equals to alpha e to theta i. Just leave the alpha here because in your form of gamma, you have alpha. So, I will not change alpha, but I will not. Uh, I mean, I will change e to the power of 2 theta i e to the power of theta i is equals to cos theta plus i sine theta. This is the polar form of a complex number. So, since I have e to the power of 2 theta i, that means gamma is equals to, I will put the alpha um, at the back of the equation. So, gamma is equals to cos 2 theta plus i sine 2 theta times alpha. Now I need to find the value of cos 2 theta and sine 2 theta. I think this is easy because we already know that angle theta makes an opposite or has an opposite side equals to 2 adjacent 1 and hypotenuse 5. So I think I will take this and then okay like this. As you know cos 2 theta by using trigonometry identity cos 2 theta is equals to cos square theta minus sine square theta so, cos 2 theta is equals to cos square theta, that means 1 over 5, minus sine square theta, which is 4 over 5. And then plus i sine 2 theta, once again by using a trigonometric identity, sine 2 theta is equals to 2 sine theta cos theta. That means sine 2 theta, I can convert it into 2 times sine theta, 2 over square root of 5, times cos theta, which is 1 over square root of 5, times alpha. By simplifying this expression, I think I will get the complex number gamma. 1 minus 4 is negative 3 over 5 plus 4 over 5i times alpha. If you see from this expression, I think we can express this in a single fraction. Then gamma is equals to negative 3 plus 4i over 5 times alpha. From this answer, you can see that we already know the answer for letter u, v, and w. u is equals to 3, v is equals to 4, and then w is equals to 5. Okay, and then this is our last question in this video. When we set pi as an angle of OBA, if you see from this illustration, OBA 
this angle is pi. Uh, wait a second. This angle is pi. We have that sine pi is equals to blah blah blah. Now we need to find sine pi. We already know that OA is equals to square root of 10. I will write down the OA uh, square root of 10. And then OB is 4 square root of 2. Then you can find um, the length of AB by using cosine rule. So I will find the length of AB first by using cosine rule. If you see from this triangle, by using cosine rule, you will get um, AB squared is equals to OA squared plus OB squared minus 2 times OA times OB times cos theta. I use cosine rule to find AB. Then AB squared is equals to OA. OA is square root of 10. Square root of 10 squared is equals to 10. Plus OB, 4 square root of 2. So if you square it, you will have 16 times 2, which is 32. Minus 2 times square root of 10 times 4 square root of 2 times cos theta you can find cos theta by looking at this right angle triangle cos theta is 1 over square root of 5 and then I will simplify this first 10 plus 32 I have 42 and then um, 2 times 4 I have 8 square root of 10 times 2 over 5 square root of 4 which is 2 so the square root expression if you simplify it you will get 2 so 8 times 2 8 times 2 is 16 40 minus 16 is 26 then AB is equals to square root of 26. Once you have AB, we can find sine pi. There is many way to find sine pi. You can use sine rule or in this case, I will use the area of triangle. Since I already know that the area of triangle OAB is equals to 8, so, I can say that A is equals to, 8 is the area of triangle, yeah? 8 is equals to half times AB times OB sine pi. So, once again, we can use sine rule to find the area of triangle, but now, I will use sine pi instead of sine theta. So, 8 equals to AB, uh, half AB times OB times sine pi if you simplify the expression you will have 8 equals to half times AB times OB 4 square root of 2 times sine pi and then I'm pretty sure you will get sine pi here I can cancel out 2 and 4 4 here leaving 2 and then 2 and 8 I can cancel out it then 4 here so sine pi is equal to 4 over square root of 26 times 2 you have square root 52 Square root of 52 is square root of 4 times 13, so 2 square root of 13. I can cancel out this one, and then by rationalizing the denominator, you will get sine pi.
which is 2 over 13 square root of 13 so the answer for letter X Y and Z is 2 1 and 3 this is it this is the end of this video I really hope you can understand this explanation and I hope I can see you guys on my next video. Thank you and bye-bye.